to my great assignment, the 2022 Nobel Prize Physics Award was given to scientists studying quantum physics. For most people, science and religion are polar opposites. Quite some time ago, I sensed the relationship between quantum physics and Buddhism. Let me explain to you the connections I see between quantum physics and Buddhism. In the last 100 years of mankind, science has begun to connect the gap between spiritual and scientific understandings of the nature of reality. This can be shown between Buddhism teachings and scientific findings of quantum physics. The Buddha says, all we are is the result of what we have sought. The mind is everything. Max Planck, the founder of quantum physics, says, all matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force. We must assume behind this force is a conscious and intelligent mind. The mind is the matrix of all matter. Buddha points to the concept of emptiness as the ground from which everything arises and returns. Buddha say that everything you feel, hear, see, taste in the current moment has emerged from the ground of infinite potentiality. For example, you may have a dream in which an anger lion is chasing you. Everything in the dream feels very vivid and real. However, in the morning, you wake up no longer afraid, knowing it was only a dream after all. But you, the lion, the world of the dream, all were created by and disappeared back into the field of consciousness. However, the dream consciousness was in a sense natural. It was the real potential ground without which the dream could not have appeared. A blank piece of paper can also serve as an, an example. Even though a blank piece of paper communicates nothing, it stands for infinite potentiality. And that an endless variety of languages, ideas, stories, can be expressed upon it. This means emptiness can be understood as an infinite field of potentiality, and in a sense, more real than anything which arises and appears from it. So what is materiality then? In a quantum understanding of materiality, materials, materiality comes in two forms, particles and waves. According to quantum physics, the strange thing about the wave form of materiality is that it has no actual location in time and space. The wave form of materiality is understood as being everywhere, all, at once. In other words, it is spread out through the entire universe. For example, imagine you have an apple in your hand. This apple in its particular form is located in space and time, but at the same time, the apple's wave is pure potentiality in time and space. How can this be? How can something that seemed to be at a particular place in a particular time also exist everywhere all at once? This simply isn't logical. However, quantum physics has confirmed the truth of wave materiality thousands and thousands of times. Was an experiment known as the double slit experiment, which we will now look into the details of in order to better understand particles and waves. The double slit experiment was first conducted by British polymath Thomas Young in the year 1801. Light was stored through two slits in a screen onto a second screen. Immediately after, the light split as a wave should. Eventually, the light was observed by the second screen. When the results of this experiment was first published, it was an earth-shattering shock to the entire scientific community because a double slit experiment proved that materiality was both particles locatable in time and space and waves everywhere all at once. Why does this matter to you? Why does this matter to me? Why does it matter to everybody listening to me speaking? Here's why this matters. Atoms are known to be complete, aren't atoms are known to be almost completely empty. Just observing this fact must force us to redefine our understanding of not only the nature of reality, but the reality of our very selves. We are only space. If I am only space, why do I feel so solid and real? If reality were to only be a space, why does it feel so solid and real? Quantum physics explains this feeling of solidness as caused by repulsive forces acting between atoms. It is similar to, ad it is similar to magnets of the same size pushing away from each other. Therefore, you never actually touch anything that is solid. 
and it is repulsive forces that are giving you a complete illusory feeling of you touching something solid, of you being solid. If you were to be sitting on a chair, you're never actually touching the chair. What is, what is really happening is the atoms inside the chair and your body repulling each other. And it is this repulsive force you're experiencing to be realityness and solidness. It is such a mysterious repulsive force that gives you a completely illusory feeling that you're not touching emptiness but something solid and real. The particles that make up these atoms form what is referred to as a quantum field. All matter originates and, and falls back into this field. That the quantum field is outside our perception, but remains the pure potentiality of all matter. The universe, the apparent world, and our very selves would eventually fall back into this field as we arise from it, just like waves are to the ocean. There's a similar idea in Buddhism. Things only appear to be solid because, that, because that's what our mind makes of them. In Buddhism and many other religious traditions, the mind is the center of reality. Mind is merely part of reality, but it's the very thing that creates what we take as reality. In the same sense, lions and worlds can be created in our dreaming state. Thus, according to this logic, our apparent world is not outside our minds, but is created by them. The understanding that our apparent reality is created by our minds is the central teaching of the Buddha. In other words, perception is reality. It was the quantum physicist Heisenberg who first realized that the observations of el electrons affected their position in time and space. He referred to this as the uncertainty principle and said, what we are observing is not nature by nature as it is affected by our observing minds. Thus, reality is defined by the mind that is observing it. The way human consciousness affects these quantum particles become very clear was the double slit experiment. Like previously mentioned, quantum particles with five to two slits. When observed, the particles make patterns and appeared as particles. When not observed, the particles appeared as wave. In other words, when observed, the particles appeared as discrete finite possibilities locatable in both time and space. That is to say, as particles, when not observed, they appeared as infinite potentiality, that is to say, not locatable as waves. Whether we are Buddhists or quantum physicists or both, we can only conclude this very thing. Before the mind, reality exists only as infinite potentiality. I believe most of you down there might be wondering what is my call to action for this talk. I hope after hearing this talk, you will consider the idea that just like quantum physics and Buddhism, things that seem to be contradicting each other at first might actually resemble each other more than we think. A negative situation isn't necessarily negative. It can be an opportunity that leads to the opening of a grand new door, just like quantum physics and Buddhism. I remember there was a quote that says, when you want something, all oh, the universe conspires in helping you achieve it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.